Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another dragon piece. Today I'm going to be doing a very, very big dragon. I wanted to try something a little bit more on the bulkier side because a lot of my dragons tend to be very long and lengthy and I wanted to try a new body style. So I'm going to be making a time dragon. I figured that theme would be something that would work really well with a larger, bulkier kind of dragon. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to work on is going to be the clay head. Now, I'm going to have the mouth actually poseable, so I'm also going to be using a resin pair of teeth that I casted ahead of time. So I'm going to start with the top portion of the head, the majority of it, and then once that's done, we'll figure out how to do the bottom jaw. So to start, I have a large lump of tin foil. I'm going to glue it to a glass container so I have something to hold on to. And then I have the upper teeth to our mouth and I'm going to glue that to the bottom portion of our tin foil. I'm going to cover up the top portion of the head in clay. So I'm going to do a thin layer of it and just drape it over the entire thing. Um, if you need to blend anything together, blend it together. And then I'm just going to try and get a rough shape to start off with. So I'm just going to kind of roughly move around the clay, adjust where I want things to kind of cave in, add more clay kind of around like the cheekbones, and just try and figure out how I want it to look. I do know that I want everything to be very bulky and like strong looking. For the eyes, because I want the head to look very large, I'm going to go a little smaller than I normally do. I tend to like to use about 16 millimeters, but for this I'm going to be kind of around 12 millimeters to keep it where everything looks a little bit larger. So I have these really pretty cat eyes that are nice green. I'm going to place them and start building up the clay around them to make the eyelids and the cheekbones. I'm going to define them a little bit more. Just kind of keep adjusting everything to go around the eyes. And then I have these really pretty resin horns that I actually made like months and months ago and I've not used them yet. I figured they would look really good with this piece. If you could guess, we're going to be doing basically everything green. So I'm going to figure out where I want the horns. I'm going to place them and then we can start adding more of the details to the face. And we're going to throw in a lot of details with this piece. I'm going to add a bunch of spikes, scales. Um, obviously, we still need to add the nose and the lips and figure out where everything else is going to go. Now, because this piece has so many details, um, if you're going to do a piece this large, I highly recommend rolling out your clay when you first start and just doing a thin layer because the more clay you add, the heavier the head is going to be. And I don't want our doll being extremely heavy. I want it to be bulky, but I want it to be like an understandable amount of weight for a doll. I don't want it to be like 10 pounds or anything because we have so much clay in it. So yeah, if you have a piece that you want to throw in a lot of details, try and be as light as possible with the clay. It'll help you in the long run when you start putting everything together. Another thing that I did to reduce the weight of my doll was use some resin pieces. So with the horns, I have those resin obviously, but I also did resin claws and you'll see that when we get to the feet. The resin is actually a lot lighter than Sculpey clay, so it definitely helps when it comes to the weight of your doll. Anyway, 
anyways, I think we're done with the first half of the head. I'm really happy with all of the details that we added. Um, I even threw in a few metal pieces, some jewelry pieces on the top of the head. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna figure out the bottom of the jaw. So I'm gonna take that other half of our resin teeth, the bottom portion of it, and we're gonna start building up some clay around that to make the bottom lips. Now you'll notice that I haven't baked the top of the head yet, and that's because I still want everything to be unbaked so I can make sure everything fits together, because I might have to remove some clay on the top portion of the head to get the jaw to match. So I left that unbaked, I'm just gonna keep it next to me so if I want to see if it fits, I can keep adjusting it and double checking to make sure that I'm doing everything right. And then after I have the lips done, I'm gonna work on the inside of the mouth. I wanna add a tongue. So I'm just going to take a little strip of clay and lay that out. I want it to ripple a little bit and then I'm gonna also fork it at the very end. And then once I have the bottom jaw done and I've made sure that it fits well with the top of the head, I'm gonna put both pieces in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes. You'll notice that I removed the horns from the head and that's because I don't wanna bake them. It's probably fine that they bake, but I'm just going to attach them more securely with resin later. Moving on to the clay feet, I have wire frames set up for all four of them. The front feet are going to end up having thumbs, but I'm going to add those later. And those resin claws that I've mentioned, they're glued to the end of each wire. I have holes drilled into the back of them and the wires glued in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to start covering up our wire frame in clay and blending everything together into the claws. So we want it to look like one solid piece. So I'm going to start with the under portion of the foot first. I'm going to start covering up that wire frame and getting to where the clay is right up against our claws. I'm going to blend them together and I'm not making individual toes with this. I'm going to end up breaking up the clay afterwards because I have the toes where they're going to be kind of thick and just pushed up against each other. So there's no reason to separate them right away. Also, I'm going to be making these a lot bulkier than a lot of feet that I usually do. Usually I do have the really long, delicate toes, but this time around everything's going to be nice and thick. So I'm gonna get the bottoms done and then I'm gonna move on to the tops of the feet. Now one thing I like to do before I move on to the tops of the feet is doing a quick pre-bake. So a pre-bake is just basically you're going to bake the clay enough to where it'll hold its shape and you can't sculpt it anymore, but it's not completely baked. So normally for this I just put it in for 15 to 20 minutes at the normal 275 Fahrenheit that we bake our clay at. And then once I have the clay added to the very top portion of the foot and blended together with everything else on the wire frame, I'm then going to add a bit of a scaling texture. And for this, I'm not gonna go super, super detailed. I just wanna add a few extra lines to the top of the foot to break it up a bit. And then once I'm happy with how all four of the feet look, I'm gonna throw these in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Once we're done baking everything and it's cool to touch, we can start on our painting. Now for the painting, remember I said everything is going to be green, so we're going to start by primering all of our clay pieces green. I've got a nice dark color and I'm just going to go over absolutely everything and get a solid color down. Now green's one of those colors that takes a few layers to get a solid layer down, so I'm going to probably go over these two, maybe three times. And then once that's dried, we can start adding some highlights. So I'm going to get some brighter greens. I'm going to throw in some yellows and stuff and just really try to get that green to pop. So I'm going to go over the head, the jaw, all four of the feet, and just really get that green to look very pretty and vibrant. Mm -hmm. 
I'm also going to throw in a few darker shades as well. I figured more of an olive green would kind of tone down different areas. That way, um, that really bright green will stand out more. So it doesn't hurt to throw in some boring colors just to make your vibrant colors stand out a little bit more. Also, I figured gold would look really cool as an accent color, so I'm going to start adding some extra line work here and there on the face and on the sides of the scales on the fronts of all the feet. So I'm just going to kind of go over it. I don't want to throw in a ton of gold, but I do want to add enough to where it just looks really, really regal, and you can definitely tell there's gold. And then to finish off the feet, I decided to paint our claws black, just left it really simple. And then the last thing we need to do on the face is we need to paint the inside of the mouth. So I'm going to go over all the teeth with kind of an off-white, I'm going to clean that up. And then the more skin area of the mouth, I have an off kind of... It's a little bit of a pale pink. I'm just going to go over the uh, top of the mouth and the bottom where the tongue is. And then once all of our paint has dried, I'm going to clean up the gem on the forehead and the glass eyes. So I'm just going to kind of scrape off that paint. I might have to water it down a little bit and scrub with maybe a Q-tip, but eventually I got everything off of it. Okay, so now that all of our clay pieces are done, let's get sewing on the fabric for the body and the wings. So I have a very large, uh, very different pattern than I normally do because I wanted to try and get a different shape for the body. So I've got majority of the body right here. Just the It's broken up a little bit differently too than I normally make my patterns. I just tried something new. But I've got the sides of the body, I've got the back portion and the belly portion of the dragon, and then I also have the wings. So for the sides of the dragon, I'm going to have a bunch of different colors. I'm going to have some fur fabrics, and I'm also going to have two different types of greens. And the idea for the body of the dragon is he's going to have a very thick mane of fur around his neck. So that's why we have the gray and black fur fabric. So I'm going to get all these different pieces sewn together to make the sides of our dragon, and then I'm going to move on to the back portion. So the back portion has the tail connected already to the back legs, and I'm just going to take the inside portion of the legs and sew them in place on the front of the legs. We're going to leave the back open for uh, putting everything together at the end. We're also going to sew the front legs together. Each leg has a front and back, and we're just going to pin those together and sew down the front of the leg. Then we can take all three of those pieces of our body and sew them together. So I'm going to add the back portion to the front portion of our dragon, and then we can add the front legs in place as well. And then for the wings, I'm going to use our darker green for the top portion of the wing, and then the underside of the wing is going to be that lighter, more olive color of green. So I'm going to pin my two pieces together and sew all the way around, leaving the base open, that way we can flip our fabric right side out. 
Now on the underside of the wing, I want the finger and like arm portion of the wing to be a separate color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down that dark green, a layer of it on top of the wing fabric. And then I have some tearaway backing fabric that I have sketched out all the portions that I want to follow with my sewing machine. So instead of drawing directly on the fabric, I have it drawn out on this. And then once we use the sewing machine to follow all the lines, all of this rips away. And then once we have both wings done, we pretty much have everything ready to put together. So I have a wire frame that's heavily reinforced because even though I tried to make my clay pieces pretty light, they're, they're still pretty heavy. So I added a lot of extra wiring to this. And then the fabric for the body is one solid piece right now, so I'm just going to take the wires of the legs on our wire frame and run them through that portion of the fabric, kind of like sliding on some clothes. I can then take our clay head, which I don't have the bottom jaw connected yet, we're going to add that later. So I'm going to take that clay head and I'm going to glue it to the wire for the neck. Then once that's dried, we can take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of the head. I'm then going to start closing up the neck. So the back portion of our dragon I glued to the very top portion of the head and I'm going to sew everything closed until we get to where the wings are going to connect. I'm also going to stuff the neck while I'm at it. Now for the legs, I'm going to start with the front legs first. I've adjusted the wires for the legs because I always make them a little bit longer than I need to. So I've got those adjusted and I'm going to take our clay legs and I'm going to wrap them in place on the wire frame connecting them to it. Then I can take the fabric for the legs and I can glue them around the wrists of the front legs or ankles or whatever you call it. <laughs> I'll let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to stuff and close up the legs. Then I'm going to take the fabric for the wings and I'm going to slide them over the wires for the wings. Once we have those in place, we can start sewing up the rest of the body, sewing the wings in place as we go. So I'm just going to connect the wings to the sides of the body and the back portion of the body. I'm going to stuff that and then I'm going to keep going until I get to the very end of the tail. So I'm going to stuff, sew, stuff, sew until the body is completely closed up, other than the legs. And then for the back legs, I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to add the feet to the wire frame, and glue the fabric around the ankles. This time I'm sure they're ankles and then I can stuff and close up the backs of them. Now that I have the body all put together, I can then start finishing up the final details, like adding the bottom jaw to the face. <laughs> so how I'm going to connect it, I have the little holes drilled for where it's going to go, and I have some elastic that I'm going to use, basically just elastic cord, and I'm going to run it through and tie it in the back. So that'll keep it where it'll stay in place, but it's stretchy enough to where you can open and close it. And then I want to add a few different pieces of metal to it. So I have some really cool broken clock pieces that I want to add to the body. And then I also have some keys. I figured this would look really cool with everything else. And I'm just going to sew them in place in the main. Now at this point I was debating on calling him all done, but I realized his body looked a little bit plain. The clay pieces are such a vibrant green that I want to throw some more vibrant greens into his body. So I ended up getting some pieces of felt and making felt scales to go along his legs and his body. So I'm just gluing all of these in place to finish him up.
Okay guys, and here is our Time Dragon. I had so much fun with this one, especially how his body came out. I'm just, I'm really happy with the proportions right here. I'm gonna have to use this pattern for something else. And that, and I really like his posable jaw. It's really easy to use. I made some alterations to it so it's not like, um, like snap together. It's held together with elastic. Just trying something different with it. That way it can open up a little bit more because the way I made it previously it wasn't opening up that wide. It was kind of stopping about here and now you can kind of go all the way with it. Anyways, if anyone wants to give our time dragon a new home, he will be on my website. Links are in the description along with a bunch of other links if you want to try and make your own dragon or art doll or basically whatever if you're just curious on what I use to make my stuff. I've got a bunch of art supplies linked down below. Now, if you do buy anything through these links, they are affiliated, so it does help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!